Hello, welcome back. I am Dressy Darkness, and this is Confessions from the Dark Side. But is it? It's Confessions from the Cranky Side. How are you all in this wonderful community? I'm going to get the disclaimer out the way first because this is a cranky side, dark side. It's me. I just can't be trusted. So let's get the disclaimer out the way. We are full of so much adult content that some of you may think this is unnecessary and some of you think that this might not be needed. If you are one of those people, then thank you for checking us out, but I'll say this only once. If you can't stand the heat, then get the fuck out of my kitchen. Now, for everyone else who likes what we have here, then regular scheduled programming will continue. Shall we get started? Are we ready? What are we covering today? Well, an article came into my homepage on Google from Screen Rant, not the biggest fan of Screen Rant and how they actually write, but it's about another reboot. We have spoke about it. It is the second reboot of 2024 from Bill Skarsgård. Yes, that's Nosferatu. Two. Nosferatu two is actually coming out. Apparently, the, re- the release date is December the 25th, which is Christmas Day. Yeah, a movie that came out um 102 years ago that apparently is going to re- redeem a flop vampire movie that was out last year now the movie that they're talking about was not a fucking flop it just wasn't picked up it wasn't released i think at the right time unfortunately but the movie was actually very well received by people for the love of horror the legacy and the myth and lore of bram stoker's dracula from the lore and the history of vlad the impaler who dracula who's actually based on and history of the man who lived whether he was a vampire undead warrior or not people well it was well received by people who enjoy that part that that sort of topic and supernatural being in horror and it was real well received by people who wanted to see a different take on dracula it was very well written very well directed and it was the one movie last year there's only two movies last year that i didn't fuck about my phone on and one was The Last Voyage of Demeter, which is what I'm talking about. And the other was... Now I've forgotten. <laughs> Sorry. The Pope's Exorcist. The Pope's Exorcist, yes, is a movie that I didn't I didn't have my phone on. Or on my person or near me. So, let's see what they say in Screen Rant and we'll discuss this. Bill Skarsgård's Nosferatu could resume the few failures of past vampire movies, offering a fresh take on the iconic horror villain. I say it this way because there is nothing iconic about him doing remakes, rehashing the exact same story. They're saying they're trying to bring it to a more modernisation of the 21st century. Have you even seen Nosferatu? It doesn't need modernisation in the story. It's done well for 102 years and it doesn't need you coming in rehashing it like you did other horror rules that Bill has done. No knock to Bill again. I've told you before, I love Bill Skarsgård. I think he's a brilliant actor. I think the full family are incredibly talented. But I just want him to step away from the reboots and the rehashes of old stories and classics and cult movies because it's destroying. Do I think he needs to be in every single genre? Maybe not. He does, he can pull off odd, weird and creepy, but is it not good for him to actually go into a character that hasn't had the spotlight? rather than, you know, recreating newer versions of older movies that don't need remade. And when they're remade, they are not always a success. They are the flop. They're going about it in this article, and I'm sorry, it. (laughs) The remake that was in 2017. Are you fucking kidding me? That movie was shit. Good actors in the movie is not going to make a shitty script any better. So that's how I feel about that. A lot of people do totally ruined... Could have done much better. Could have I, I could have went in other directions because that book has got so much content. It's a Stephen King book for fuck's sake, and he has got so much imagery and so much different topics in that story alone. They could have blown open Derry, but hey, the up and coming remake focuses on Count Orlock and the eerie atmosphere of the original, promising a spine chilling experience for fans. Does it really? I've seen the pictures of them, and there's nothing creepy about it. Nothing at all. With Robert Eggers at the helm. The helm. I'm s- that gets used in fucking Screen Rant quite a lot. Uh, at the helm, at the wheel. We get it. It's about power. Expect 
expect a visually stunning film that pays homage to the classic while bringing a new twist to the vampire genre. We have already had vampire twists in the vampire genre over the years. Can we talk about Twiglet, sorry, Twilight? Sparkly fucking vampires with the most monotoned, motionless faces of Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart. I don't want to go through that again, thank you very much. It's already... Oh. Then, what other reimaginings of vampires do we have? I think Twilight has just destroyed me there and then. That's how I feel about that. We had so many different vampire shows out, uh, things that were released at the wrong time. Moonlight was released at the wrong time and that was really, really good. It was, again, similar to an old show called Forever Night that was out in the 90s, late 80s, 90s, about Nick Nick St. John. He was like a detective, etc. It's a TV show, but again, it showed you like vampires differently in an hour world now. Twilight, what the fuck? What the fuck? What? That's just, no. I just, no, 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 no. Tangent, get away from Twilight, come on, we don't like it. <laughs> We've had a remake of Vampire Genre, we have The Lost Boys, and they managed to get, what, is that three sequels or three, a new franchise of The Lost Boys, because the first one was the terrible enough. Yeah. Even Renfield was supposed to be a dark comedy, and Nicolas, Cla- Nicolas Cage played a better and more believable Dracula, then I believe he will, will Bill Skarsgård will play for Count Orlock. Not get anything against Nicholas Cage, you know I love him, but that movie was awesome, terrible, but not terrible enough for you not to enjoy it. It was funny, it was bloody, it was gory. It's exactly what it was described as, and how many films can actually be as described these days? Not fucking many. So, Bill Skarsgård is quickly becoming one of the first names in horror. Is he? Is he really? No, he's no. And his latest monster movie, Nosferatu, could redeem a specific 2023 horror flop. Nosferatu is disturbingly creepy. Count Orlock in the gothic vampire tale from director Robert Eggers will not be the first vampire Bill Skarsgård has played. Badly? Probably. But it could be his most iconic horror role since Pennywise in 2017's remake of the Stephen King's It. Iconic horror role? Most iconic role? Are you trying to oversell this movie because you know it's going to be shit? However, it's more recent vampire movie that stands as the most direct comparison to Nosferatu and its failure could be redeemed by Nosferatu's anticipated success. Will it? Will it fuck? Hmm. While details like Nosferatu's release date have been revealed, there have been a very little news regarding the movie's plot. Now why? Because they did it with the crow. It was all that anticipation when I first seen the fucking image. I was like, shite, shite, it's going to be 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 shite. shite." Especially when they went through so many fucking actors to play Eric Draven. And now they're doing it with Nosferatu. Are they noticing a pattern here that when fucking Bill Skarsgård becomes the helm of horror as they're trying to put it in this article that he is an iconic actor but he's not the face of fucking horror and he never fucking will be horror has many fucking faces and not one actor can actually hold them all obviously it will borrow heavily from the 1922 german expressionist film that's based upon but robert eggers's unique attention to period detail and spine tingling imagery added to the mix. I'm already turned off, completely locked up, don't want to return to that sentence. The story behind Nosferatu and its lead character, Count Orlock, are based heavily on Bram Stoker's 1897 novel, Dracula, and it's the failure of another Dracula-related vampire movie that Nosferatu could atone for when it debuts in December of 2024. I... This is some top class ass kissing right there. So Nosferatu can redeem 2023's The Last Voyage of the Demeter. Skarsgård's character is closer to the 2023's movie's version of Dracula. Is it? Is it? The Last Voyage of Demeter focused on a specific chapter of Bram Stoker's Dracula titled The Captain's Log. (laughs) Captain's Log is a euphemism for poo. Ha ha. It's... And I'm not saying that Demeter is Captain Log, I'll maybe just call Nosferatu from now on. 
It's the story of how the boat that ferried Drackler from his home of Transylvania to London, England, came to be deserted when it arrived at port. The 2023 movie that starred Corey Hawkins, Ailing France, Fran, Franciosi. Sorry if I'm butchering your name, but I can't. <laughs> David Das Malikin and Liam Cunningham. And despite a sizable budget of 45 million and its recognisable cast, it was a disaster at the box office. Again, it was not, it wasn't PR'd correctly, that movie. I had seen a tra- trailer because my husband and I do watch the trailers that are coming out that month or movies that are coming out, especially horror movies and sci fi. We're always watching these new trailers that come up on YouTube. And the poster for that movie is the front of the ship with Demeter on it, the Greek goddess. So it just, and it just showed you like the boat. And it was just, oh, it was, it was wonderful how they depicted, depicted Dracula, they depicted how he would travel, the way he would travel, and if he get out on a boat, how he would be. So apparently, it only mustered up $21.8 million at box office, which is partially owed to its poor critical reception, apparently. Right, okay. Bill Skarsgård will play the villainous Count Orlok in Nosferatu. And his lo- pale, long-fingered vampire, <laughs> he must be popular, comes far too close to the creature depicted in Demeter than Belliosi's traditional Eastern Europe known woman from 1933. While the new movie story will not compare entirely to Demeter, it looks like it will invoke similar story elements such as Orlok's stalking of his prey, who is Lily Rose Depp, Ellen Hutter. Bill Skarsgård horror roles have be- by and large been successful over the years really depends who you fucking speak to a great chance of redeeming the last voyage of Demeter of the Demeter by collaborating with Robert Eggers so they've just admitted to that they are that yes they're doing it as Nosferatu but they're just going to rip off the last voyage of the Demeter because they think that the movie flopped because it didn't reach the audience it did so collaborating with Nosferatu and the last voyage of Demeter are you fucking telling me it's basically just you putting those, like, stitching those fucking stories together. What the fuck? Bill Skarsgård's Nosferatu can break the recent run of bad vampire movies. Bill Skarsgård cannot. Unless he comes into a movie that actually isn't a remake, then we'll talk. Then we'll discuss that shit. But he is not making vampires and gothic aspects of horror. He is not the face of that. I'm sorry, but he fucking isn't. I get really pissed off and I just punched my fucking mic. Because I'm so angry. <laughs> Nosferatu can redeem more than just the last voyage of the Demeter. The entire vampire subgenre has suffered in recent years when it comes to big budget success. Many recent vampire movies have been astounding disappointments at box office. So some fucking action movies. Hello. With very few big budget efforts failing to register with critics either. For example, the vampire Morbius produced one of the lowest Rotten Tomato scores or tomato scores ever for a Marvel character. Uh, I would probably check that, by the way, because I don't think Morbius will be at the lowest now. Have you seen some of the shite that Disney pedals and the Marvel shite that they've tried to fucking butcher over the years for the society that we fucking live in? No one fucking wants to see it. Fuck you. And the one film I will stick up for with fucking Jared Leto, because I'm not a big fan of his work either, is the fact that he was fucking amazing as Morbius, so fuck you, Screen Rant, for that. Nicolas Cage and Nicholas Holt's drama movie Renfield was also a critical disaster. Shut the fuck up. Why is he not? Seriously, what I mean, see, Renfield wasn't supposed to be a huge movie, so I don't know why they're fucking... Oh, fuck you. Jamie Foxx's 100 million Netflix Vampire Hunter movie Day Shift received middling or middling yet yeah, reviews at best. Again, it's Netflix. It's not like Prime or any uh, or HBO for that matter. It's fucking Netflix. They don't do anything brutal at all. The only brutal fucking shit they do is destroying stories like The Witcher and amongst any other things that they have tried to put out there. They just they take a story and it's got all this lore and everything like that. They take stories, they take books, they take many things and they recreate something that I've actually put out better down the toilet than they actually do when they write things and adapt things. So Netflix, that's not a good fucking, that is not a good comparison. It really isn't. While well, the, really, the recently released Abigail has been a hit with the critics, finally it has continued the disappointing box office trend for horror movies. Well, Abigail again is based on Abigail being the daughter of Dracula. 
and it starts off like an action mystery type thing, like a heist of a rich house, basically, and then they don't realise what the fuck's inside. No, the protection is to keep you out, not fucking, you know, keep them in, basically. It's to basically save everybody from Abigail, as they fucking find out. And that's the good thing about that, that a little girl, that they have these expectations of her not being strong and being weak and being a damsel in distress. Is she fuck? She's a fucking mindless killer. She may look like a child, but she is old and she can take you no matter what. Nosferatu can go a long way towards reviving vampires in modern horror. No, it can't, which is sorely sorely needed at the general box office despite a number of smaller scale films being considered hits. Bill Skarsgård's status as a go-to horror star, fuck you, should certainly help make sure that his Count Orlok becomes a new classic horror villain when Nosferatu hits the theatres. No. They've taken the... Well, they're saying it's closer to uh, Demeter, where he stalks his prey. Now, most vampires stalk their prey. Especially, they show you that in so many different horror movies, different horror stories and different vampire stories that, especially for, especially Dracula and Mina, Mina is eternal and she keeps coming back when he appears because it's their tragic love story and he is her weakness but also her strength. So him stalking and kind of playing with her is a typical normal thing, especially with Ripper-like vampires. Ripper-like vampires are a lot of the time are portrayed as villainous, but they actually are villainous for a reason and they're a Ripper for a reason because they don't want people to get too close because they don't want to lose the people that they love and they care about. It's again how some people actually act, whether they're vampires or not, whether they're emotional vampires not. They're saying that this Lily Rose's character is basically being stopped by a, the last voyage of Demeter, like Nosferatu, merging the stories together, and we're supposed to believe that this guy has just came up with a story out of nowhere. He's now deciding um, that Demeter deserves to be rebooted after only a year, but we'll do Nosferatu at the same time, so we can do Kill Two Birds with One Stone. Ancient, dark, gothic character with some lore and myth and traits of a vampire like we haven't seen before by the way you see it all the time without them without me seeing on my glitter and walking in the daylight which i know he does do in bram stoker's dracula with gary oman he's in an overcast day but he controls the weather we see that a lot of the Nosferatu images are reminding me of how they actually went with the original Salem's Lot. The original Salem's Lot had a similar look to Nosferatu, but the way they actually portrayed the main vampire. So it has been done. It has been adapted for movies and other people's writings, as it does over time. I can't believe reading that, what they're actually trying to push. They're trying to push Nosferatu as the new, all new horror movie for vampires and Supernatural. The cast in it, though, like I said before, it's got Lily, Rose Depp, Bill Skarsgård, Emma Corrin, again, Emma Corrin, amazing actress as well, Aaron Taylor-Johnson, Nicholas Holt, Willem Dafoe, Ralph Innocen, and Simon Burney. You've got so much... Willem Dafoe is, like, legendary act, known for so many roles and so many different characters that he has brought to life. Aaron Taylor-Johnson, guy who's was in Kick-Ass and now he's in Craven and he could be 007. He'd make a really good 007 because he was amazing in Bullet Train and seeing his career evolve over the years, it's really, really good to see someone a kind of like well-rounded head on their shoulders for when they're actually doing projects. He's just doing everything and he's everywhere and do I feel that the industry is saturated by Bill Skarsgård and Aaron Taylor-Johnson? No, I do not. I don't. It just shows that they are popular and they usually are very good actors. Bill Skarsgård just keeps getting shitty fucking reboots and stuff and he needs to just back the fuck away and do something good like he did when he was in John Wick. Emma Corrin, again, she's an amazing actress and it's nice to see her in a different type of role. And again, Lily Rose Depp is the child of Johnny Depp and Vanessa Paradis. So again, she's uh, what comes from two talented parents. So I really want to see her in something else that's not this. It'd be nice if they maybe because they're remaking Sleepy Hollow, maybe if they actually casted her as one of the characters, you know, that kind of tie in with her dad and her dad doing kind of gothic type movies. That would be nice to see, like a passing of the torch type thing, but you never know. 
who's up for that and who's going to be doing that. Will I be watching Nosferatu? Most likely I will be because I want to see how terrible they have ruined another horror movie that I enjoy and especially about vampires because you know I'm a lover of vampires and undead creatures and we are on this podcast anyway. What do you think about Screen Rant and their description of what they think that, or sorry, what they believe that Nosferatu 2 is going to do for horror, Nosferatu 2 is going to do for vampires, and Nosferatu 2 is going to do for both Skarsgård in the face of horror and iconic roles in horror? Do you think that Bill Skarsgård can fill those shoes? Do you think he's had enough chances and he should just fuck off and go do other films that he fucking is awesome at? Because he's a very talented actor who can do very many multitude of roles. I want to see him in more action. Like, he was just so good in John Wick, that thing. So I'd really like to see him in more kind of things like that. But he keeps going for horror. Maybe he likes it. But he, you really are destroying things for us in the horror community. So please take back. Go do another character. Please, I don't want to open my browser to being told that you're, you've accepted another reboot or rehash of a horror movie, mate. Please go find stories that need to be brought into the light and brought to life. Let us know in the comments below. Do you like these rants about news in the horror community? And is there anything else that you would like to bring to our attention or is there anything that you want to discuss with us or you would like us to discuss then let us know in the comments below if you like content like this remember to go to our social media platforms for confessions from the dark side which is twitter instagram facebook youtube amazon music spotify and buzzsprout let us know what you think of our on our social media and let us get chatting about this topic all the topics let's grow our community and spread out awesome the horror community is if you want to get to know us as individuals, then you can go check out our links below. I am Darcy Darkness and my channel is called Behind the Mash Reviews. I have an Instagram, a Twitch and a Kick. Lunar is Lunar X Rising and he has a YouTube, a Twitch and an Instagram. And if you want to reach out to us at any point, we have some email addresses, which is for the channel, confessionsfromthedarkside at gmail.com, Darcy, Behind the Mash Reviews at gmail.com and the spelling is on screen. And Lunar is LunarXRising at gmail.com. And that was Confessions from the Dark Side presents Confessions from the Cranky Side. Another reboot, Nosferatu. Another Bill Skarsgård rant, put it that way. Skarsgård, is he the new face of horror? Is he the iconic horror villain that we need for this generation? Do we need to modernise old, awesome stories and movies for the 21st century with the face of Bill Skarsgård? Let us know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. I am Darcy Darkness. Later!